programs. Um, at the senior level, we have two general manager development programs. Um, one is more university driven and one is more on property driven. And then through the layers of our teams, we have development programs for everybody. So every year, um, everybody gets a personal development program done for them, where we, we elaborate how, what they've done really well for the last 12 months and what they need to improve on. Then we'll sit down with them and discuss with them, where do you, where do you want to go? So the support we give them is on-job training. Um, our training, every property has its own training manager. Um, the training manager will actually tailor certain training sessions for them. We then have um, training components where we will send them to other properties and they'll learn how to do it at, at a different property, maybe a corporate property for example, and then bring them back. I think uh, competition is healthy. Um, there's no such thing as too much competition. I think the, the, the forward planning needs to be thought through very well because I think the, there's a, a potential danger of diluting um, what is the Maldives by having too many properties and the natural, the natural course of events if you have a lot of properties coming on stream at the same time and not enough guests to fill them, we're all fighting over the same guests which means there'll be a rate war. So people will start cutting rates. Once they start cutting rates, then they look at how they can save expenses, which means services decline. And that's, that's something I'd be very careful about because the Maldives is well known for, for its very high service standards. So providing that, that growth and development is well thought through and the growth and development goes hand in hand with the incoming numbers increasing, it, it will work. The danger, I think, is in growing too fast. Look, I think it's great. Um, honestly, I think developing guest houses, again, they would be on local islands. So it's, it's bringing an economy into the local islands that will benefit the local island. And I think having some tourism infrastructure within local islands will change the dynamics of a local island in a positive way. Um, I think too, from a, from a, a guest perspective, there's a certain guests who want the five-star resort experience. Then there's a lot of guests who want an immersion into local culture. And I think guest houses on local islands will actually bring more guests to the Maldives because that type of guest we don't, we don't cater for at the moment. And I think it's, it's going to be very rewarding for, for both parties. I mean, the guests who want that cultural experience and for the local islands will benefit economically from bringing those guests in. And it can only benefit the Maldives overall, I believe. Accor operates very ethically at all times. We, we had approval um, for the art installation at the time. Unfortunately, um, it became an issue. We have no problem in complying with the change. So our perspective is, look, um, we're here as a guest in your country and we're a guest company in your country. We want to do the right thing. So the fact that, that the, the sculptures were removed um, is, is absolutely fine. What we're, what we're now investigating is a different type of sculpture using the same ferro concrete, which is, uh, it attracts a coral because it's a corollarium. Yeah. So the intention was to grow coral on the sculptures. And over time, you wouldn't even see the sculptures yeah. that would be covered in coral. So we're actually talking to the artist now and he's coming with a different type of sculpture which doesn't represent human form or doesn't represent an, an idol of any kind. So we will, we will repopulate the sculpt, sculptures but not in human form or idol form. So the corollarium will, will actually be rebuilt and, uh, and we'll go ahead.